Hello, welcome to the Monday, May 14th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Friday, Ramco wrote about some traffic that he saw hitting his honeypots. Now, the traffic looks very much like command control traffic from the NJ RAD tool. Now, Typically, you wouldn't really expect a honeypot to receive traffic like this unless you happen to inherit the IP address of a command and control server. What appears to be a little bit different here is that three IP addresses in China are scanning the internet essentially using this type of traffic. Not sure if they're trying to find command control servers or if they're looking for infected systems, probably more the former than the later. Now, some strings in this traffic implicate North Korea. However, that appears really just to throw off investigators potentially. It's kind of almost too obvious to be actual North Korean traffic. The IP addresses are consecutive. So there are three different consecutive IP addresses that are scanning for this. Web servers running on these IP addresses, identifying them as part of the Y team network security team that according again to that website focuses on internet wide network attacks. And Argentinian security researcher Alfredo Ortega published a brief video on Twitter showing a possible vulnerability in the popular messaging application Signal. Signal, of course, is in particular used as an encrypted and secure messaging application. And so far, this could potentially be a pretty big deal. What it shows looks very much like cross-site scripting. Now, you may wonder, how does cross-site scripting show up in a desktop application? Well, if that desktop application is not a browser, but still displays and renders HTML and JavaScript, then this is certainly possible. There are some suggestions that this may actually not be a signal specific vulnerability, but that it is related to Electron. Electron is a framework that can be used to essentially code desktop applications using Using HTML and JavaScript. We had a vulnerability in this framework a couple of months ago. If you remember, this was about URLs that could be abused in order to execute arbitrary code on a system running applications written in Electrum. If this vulnerability turns out to be an Electron vulnerability instead of a Signal vulnerability, then other applications like most notably Slack and Skype may be affected as well. Now, the bug leading to the vulnerability apparently is a regular expression that was removed in a recent revision of Signal. Apparently, one of those famous cases where developers forgot what they initially used that regular expression for, considered it unnecessary, and then removed it. So another reason to comment your code. And I'm not sure if it's the same vulnerability, but late last week also Spider Labs, a part of Trustwave, did publish a blog post with a very specific electron vulnerability. They call it a node integration bypass. And essentially what it refers to is a cross-site scripting vulnerability in Electron that's then being used in order to access Node.js. By exploiting cross-site scripting vulnerabilities in Electron applications, you're able to essentially access everything that Node.js has built in. So you're then, for example, able to execute arbitrary code on the system. Now, in order to limit the effect of vulnerabilities, Electron by default does turn off node integration, but the vulnerability found by Spider Labs can be used to re-enable it. So like I said, no idea if these two vulnerabilities, the one in Signal and the one found in Electron are related, but needless to say, the Electron vulnerability does most likely affect Signal, as well as of course, other applications taking advantage of Electron. And it looks like whenever we have a new public code repository, it doesn't take too long for someone to find a way to upload malware to it. 
The latest victim here is the Ubuntu Snap Store. Snap is a new package format that promises to provide distribution independent packages. So you could download the same Snap package on Ubuntu as well as on SendOS. In this case, the hacker used a trick that we have seen many times in the Google Play Store or other similar repositories. They take a fairly popular piece of software, in this case, the 2024 game, and then relabel it, repackage it, and add malware to it. In this case, the malicious package was called 2048 Ubuntu, and it included, of course, a crypto coin miner. The malicious application has been removed now and the particular developer's account was suspended and other applications have been removed as well pending further investigation. Well, that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.